What's up Internet, IG here again with another Linux distro review and today by popular demand we're looking at OpenSUSE 12.2. Yes, it is the release candidate, but shh, don't say that. <laughs> All right, so this is the KDE release of OpenSUSE's latest offering, or OpenSUSE, SUSE. There's actually a, a, a vast myriad of uh, pronunciations of its title. I'm gonna go with SUSE just because that's what I hear is the more official version, but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. So feel free to have a debate in the comments below. I don't really mind, but I've been a long time admirer of OpenSUSE. It was one of my first more advanced distributions, and it was really what uh, what taught me a lot about Linux, and I really appreciate it as a distribution, and I really appreciate the work that they do because they put in a lot of effort into their distribution. It's not just a distribution, it's a, it's a development platform, it's a, it's a way to get packages out there, it's really everything that you would want a Linux distribution to be. It really harnesses every single element of Linux uh, that, that, that's just amazing and turns it into a, an operating system that, uh, that a real power user can get to know. Uh, you don't have to be a crazy, uh, you don't have to be a crazy terminal junkie or anything like that. It is simple enough that you can learn it, uh, and that's certainly what I did. Uh, is take some time learning it because they also do have very good documentation. Uh, that's one of their legacies that they have some great user manuals out there. Um, they're one of the they're one of the few distributions that that also do those official boxed editions. So they do have some very nice manuals, of course, to go along with those that you can download for free. Having said all of that, um, OpenSUSE really brings like most most of the latest technologies, but not quite cutting edge to uh, to the desktop. So you can see here we've got KDE 4.8.4, which is the latest uh, in the 4.8 series. Now, who's to know whether it's going to go to KDE 4.9 by final release? I shall definitely throw an annotation in the video if it does. But uh, but to the, to the best of my opinion, I'm I'm assuming that they're probably going to stay with the 4.8.4 simply because it's a maintenance release it's much more stable uh, 4.9 being open source they are going to want to experiment a bit more and uh, they are going to want to make sure that it is functioning the way that they uh, the way that they want it to they are very much focused on polish which is why we're seeing a bit of a delay in this release because they are wanting to make sure that it works uh, because quite honestly a lot of their target is is based towards the the more enterprise side of things so a lot of the software that they use uh, the their configuration tools, Yast being of course the, the flagship of those tools, uh, is really, really designed for sy uh, system administrators. Now, uh, one thing that I will say quickly just before I get going too much further into this video is that the mouse is glitching around a little bit. I think this is just a bug inside VirtualBox, uh, but I also will say that the VirtualBox drivers that come with uh, OpenSUSE are automatically installed, so you don't have to uh, install the additions yourself. So that that is a plus, but again, the mouse is a little bit glitchy. So you you'll have to you'll just have to ignore it if it jumps around a little bit during the video. But quickly talking about Yast here, uh, Yast is a fantastic tool. I've I've sung its praises before. You've got everything you could possibly want or need as a system admin in here, and is really a, com a computer user that wants to harness every single element of their computer without diving into crazy terminal prompts. However. If the X graphics server does manage to uh, crash on you and you've been tinkering around a little bit and accidentally tied yourself in a knot, well then it turns out that Yas does have a terminal equivalent of its user interface that you don't actually need X to load. So uh, that has actually happened before a long time ago before the uh, ATI drivers on OpenSUSE worked and uh, my X server crashed and I was able to just go through Yast in the terminal and it looked very simple and in cursor based uh, user interface and I was able to fix those issues, no worries at all. So really OpenSUSE is a distribution I've always felt safe with. Their package management has been a little bit clunky in the past. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, in just a bit, but uh, I will definitely say that they've improved that element of the distribution so much over the last couple of releases. They've really listened to what uh, to what you know the community and what reviewers have been saying about their package management. They've really been getting on top of it. Uh, Performance-wise, nowadays it's well and truly on par with any other distribution out there. Uh, having said that, the way that, the, the way that they install packages isn't supposed to be the, the most, uh, most user-friendly way to do it. It's not a very pretty package manager like, uh, like all the other ones with their categories and groupings, but having said that, you still are able to search through uh, and find the packages that you need. Uh, it is important though, if you're going to be viewing here, you need to, you do need to select what you want up here as far as RPM groups. They're a lot of fun. You can install, uh, you know, groups of multimedia packages or games, and that's really what meta packages are in a sense. 
Um, but then you've also got your different, you know, search terms here that you can key in. And then all your packages is of course gonna show up here with some descriptions. You tick the ones you want and you, and you press accept. It's fairly straightforward. And I also will note that they do pull in uh, Flash by themselves uh, when you use the online update. When you start up for the first time and it runs the update through, refreshes the repositories automatically for you, configures the fastest speed for you, which is really nice. Technologically on the back end, the software management is crazy. It's very, very impressive and, uh, and really it'd be great to see uh, a better user interface on, on the top of this, even if they use KDEs, uh, even if they use uh, KDEs, what is it, the APA, um, the APA software manager, because even that, uh, although it's very simplistic, really these guys have so much technology built into their uh, distribution that if they installed APA or something like that on top of it just for the new users, uh, I reckon they could pull a lot more people into OpenSUSE. But, but to be honest, apart from the fact that I just called OpenSUSE OpenSUSE, their software management and, and installing new software, attracting new users, that's not really what OpenSUSE is about. It's about having a solid work base that you can really get some serious computing done on. And really they've been very consistent with that image over time. It's one of the reasons I love OpenSUSE as a distribution and it's always gonna hold a special place in my shelf of Linux distros. I will also comment that yes, the installer this time around was much faster performing even on VirtualBox this time around. I have had some bad experiences with uh, with the Yast installer just being too pokey and being too sluggish and clunky. They've really stripped it down and it is really much, much faster and, uh, and much more to the point than what it ever was before. So well done for them getting that right. Uh, one thing I will comment on the installer is that the live installer doesn't really give you much information. It does give you a rundown of what the installer is doing, but it doesn't give you any sort of intro. If you download the DVD release, which is what really you're des uh, it's designed for, uh, which is the install only, there's no live CD. You install that and it gives you a slideshow, it gives you links to their user manuals, uh, you know, license agreement, all that fun stuff, and gives you a bit to do while you're watching it install. Now, I'm just gonna quickly run through the applications here while I keep talking. You can see here we've got the LibreOffice drawer and uh, and Gwenview here as well. You'll also notice that they are doing the same thing as uh, the previous distribution I was reviewing, Lunanix. They're, uh, they're calling the applica applications by their what they do, not, not uh, by their actual titles. Beside Firefox, which is a recognizable name, in the in, uh, in the you know internet community, you've got drawing programs, image viewers, you've got microblogging client, mail client, BitTorrent client. They're all default KDE apps, so you get a very consistent uh, user interface. You don't have too many libraries here out of the box. Uh, this is, of course, the KDE Live CD. And of course, you do get the contact personal information manager suite, which is uh, very, very nice. And every year, KDE make fantastic additions to this personal information management suite. Uh, because to be honest, this thing can tie in with so many different services, it's not funny. Really, it's a must have if you're running a KDE desktop, and most of you already know that. One thing that I will comment about KDE, and this is not really something that OpenSUSE has anything to do with, it's more about the fact that KDE has a lot of backend services that are enabled by default. I'm not sure if this is a smart idea. I think that they would be better turning some of them off and uh, letting the user enable them if they want it, such as desktop desktop search, uh, Akinati, which is like a, which is like a data transfer between applications, just making sure that applications talk to each other about the information you've entered. While it's very convenient uh, with, you know, for any user who's on KDE, I think at the same time, they need to be a bit more simplistic, at least out of the box and let users uh, get to know how advanced KDE can be. But really the, the default options with KDE nowadays compared to the mess that is Windows 8 and the uh, slightly streamlined yet uh, arguably still a little bit messy Ubuntu Unity, but it, after all, it is my personal favorite. So that's all I'm gonna say. It's just, it just works for me. KDE is gonna be some, uh, an interface that users are gonna get very uh, used to very quickly, simply because you've got a simple start button, you've got a task bar, and you've got notifications in the corner, just like the desktop has been for 20 odd years now. So no problems there whatsoever. And so we move on to multimedia apps. You can see here that we've got, of course, caffeine and Rock and all of those default KDE apps. There's really nothing to write home about with the default applications here. Yast is definitely a huge plus for this distribution. If you want, uh, if you want very deep root level control of your computer, then Yast is the place to visit because uh, really this this particular configuration tool really is what makes OpenSUSE amazing. The other thing that is definitely worth mentioning is the build service. As you can see here, it's only got nine days to go until final release, but you can see through the OpenSUSE build service, uh, this is really something that the SUSE team have poured such time and innovation into this thing uh, that it's really become such a great 
uh, tool that not just SUSE users, but the whole open source community can utilize if it wants. It great, gives you some great system stats. You can see their sponsors here. I mean, SUSE are, are, have been a company that have taken Linux seriously for such a long time now. They're one of the oldest players in the field. They know what they're doing and they're a dedicated team. And despite the fact that they've changed hands a number of times, uh, you really, you, you do, you do feel quite uh, backed by some sort of corporate entity uh, when you install this distribution that you really feel like you are going to get help uh, if you need it. Of course, Mint and Pingai and a lot of those other distributions have great communities as well. Uh, just OpenSUSE has always come across as very professional. So what is the build service essentially? Well, it's basically just a pathway for developers to push out their applications and for those packages uh, or for those original source packages to be built uh, and packaged into whatever they want, uh, RPMs or DEBs or any of those sorts of things so they can publish them out to uh, various distributions and have them cover multiple, uh, multiple distributions on multiple platforms. It's very, very convenient. From the OpenSUSE build service, you can enable all kinds of different repositories on your SUSE system to, uh, to enable uh, more up-to-date software or different desktop managers or cutting edge. You can really turn OpenSUSE into whatever beast you want it to be through the convenience of the build service, uh, which also leads me to mention that you can turn OpenSUSE into a rolling release through uh, simply enabling one of their repositories. They have a vast array of, rep of, uh, of repositories out there you can enable through the package manager. And I know this is a long video, but there's so much to talk about, which leads me to the final innovation of the OpenSUSE team, and that is the SUSE Studio. Uh, SUSE Studio is such a great tool for those, uh, for especially companies wanting to make their own uh, brand of, of Linux, as it were, to, to roll out on all of their office computers or on all their desktops in their company. You can Because you can really customize every single element of the distribution and you can make it look exactly the way you want it to. Now, unfortunately, SUSE has also copped a bit of flack in the past for its alliances with Microsoft. And yes, it does exist. Uh, SUSE Studio can also be hosted as uh, operating systems. They can be hosted in the cloud via uh, Microsoft Azure along with a lot of other cloud providers out there as well so it's not all just one-sided um, but really SUSE Studio is a fantastic tool uh, that these, these guys really pushed a, a whole new level of cloud innovation here when it came to creating an operating system entirely in the cloud making it available for download but also being able to host it through uh, cloud services like Amazon EC2, Windows Azure, etc., etc. So really, if you wanted, if you want to create your own operating system and be able to test drive it, you want to be able to tinker it, change it to uh, put your own branding on it. SUSE Studio is the place to go, and this is really what makes the SUSE ecosystem so amazingly powerful. So final thoughts. Uh, I know I haven't, I, I know I've covered a lot of stuff here, but definitely performance is way up there again. Once again, KDE is getting snappier and snappier with every release. Uh, so there's no gripes there from KDE whatsoever. I haven't had any KDE crashes thus far either. Of course, I'm just using this on VirtualBox at the moment, but I have been using it on my desktop as well, and I haven't been noticing any crashes at all. Uh, they do, they do have some registered bugs with the RC at the moment, but of course it's always pays to wait until the release comes out. So performance is great. Boot time is much, much improved. Uh, the install time is a lot quicker as well. Of course, don't offer this distribution to those who are curious about Linux. Give it to people who are serious about computing. Because yes, you are going to have to learn some things, but when you do, uh, you'll notice that you're being a lot more efficient with the way you use your computer, the way you manage it. And SUSE really does such a great job at, at holding your hand through that process. So thanks for watching once again. Uh, definitely check out my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for liking and subscribing and commenting and, and sharing it and doing all the things that your audience are fantastic at doing. We'll definitely be having a look at Solus OS 1.2 coming out very shortly. Uh, the Linux gaming series will continue with 0 AD coming out and quick heads up on that one I've got no idea about real time strategy games so you guys are going to have to bear with me on that one leave any more suggestions for distributions or games down below we're also going to be having a look at the third and finally now uh, Mac OS 10 type distributions which is of course Ping iOS 12.04 a distribution that is very well respected in the open source community Ping of course doing some great work over there so thanks again for watching and I shall see you all next time and of course I can't end the video there peace out ladies and gentlemen